Hey guys, today in this video we're going to show how to do hardware flashing of your BIOS. And this is extremely useful for, you say you break your BIOS, say you set a BIOS password and forgot it, or to support your new CPU that you got, you need to do a BIOS update. Um, but be warned, this is for educational purposes only. Please do your research if you even want to attempt this. This video is not all encompassing and if you break your motherboard or fry your BIOS chip, it is your fault. Um, so here we have the H310-F Pro. Now this is a mining motherboard. It has 13 PCI slots and you could technically hook up 13 GPUs. So I turn it on and the fan spins up and I get no screen. I get my dirty fingerprints looking back at me because I'm one of those people to touch my own screen. And I look and the HDMI cable is plugged in and the easy debug um, LED readout has the bottom one lit up so I get the manual and I'm like okay this is promising let's let's look and see what it's yelling about um, but when we look in the manual it actually isn't all that helpful it just says there's no boot device detected or that the boot device failed well we should at least be able to get into the BIOS to see these kind of things and so I go to MSI's website and I pull up our motherboards web page and I see that it supports 9th and 8th gen Intel Core CPUs. And it got me thinking, like, what was the CPU that the guy sold me, you know, in this combo? And he, good thing he had the box, and I look at it, and it's the i5-9400. This is a 9th gen CPU. So now I'm thinking there's a BIOS problem, because usually there's some kind of forward compatibility update to enable these CPUs and we look and in 2018 they actually did push a BIOS update to support 9th gen CPUs so the theory I'm leaning on right now is this thing isn't updated so I downloaded the latest updated BIOS and this is always what you want to do the most up to date because it has all the microcode updates and security and vulnerability patches and it, we get it it's in a zip file we extract it and we get this 2A0 file this is our BIOS file. This is what we want. So we get the our CH341A programmer. This is what I'm using. It's eleven dollars. It's actually this really neat device. Um, you can connect. It comes with a clip. It has a little. It can actually do SPI BIOS. It says I2C and EEPROM. Uh, you want to make note of the 25 and the 24, depending on what section you're using it for. Um, also, there's this little diagram here. There's a little white circle in the corner. Um, that white circle is where pin 1 goes. And on the clip, to identify pin 1, it's the red cable. Um, but when you plug it into this little board, it's keyed, so you can't really plug the cable in wrong, which is, which is actually a good thing. But on the board, it also lists what pin 1 is. And so we just line that pin 1 up with what the little diagram showed us. And I just make sure it's all the way over, we're in the right slots. And when I'm comfortable without sitting, I put the lever down, that locks it into place, and we should be good to go. Now, first you want to identify your BIOS chip. We have this WinBond 25Q128. And that little circle in the pin underneath it is pin 1 of the BIOS. That's how we're going to hook our clip up. We want to make sure our red wire on the clip and the circle in uh, leg on the BIOS chip line up but quickly before we do that we just pull the CMOS battery out we really don't want any voltage running through this I know some people have done this before I've actually accidentally done it before and it hasn't broke you know my CPU or motherboard are still fine but just to be on the safe side remove all the power sources as you can see the ATX power is unplugged um, so now once it's connected we plug it into our laptop and the little light will come on showing it's getting power. And I'm using KUbuntu and we'll install flash ROM. So I just do sudo app git install flash ROM and then we do sudo flash ROM dash dash programmer. Uh, and then we list our programmer so space ch341a underscore spi. And then the dash r command stands for read. And this is going to read what's on the chip and it's going to write it to new one dot bin. Um, this process does not take that long. Uh, reading is relatively quick. I've actually I've sped this up because it does still take a minute. Um, after each read, we do a SHA-512 sum, and then we do that on our new bin file that we made. 
So we're going to do this three times. And if all of our hashes come back the same, it shows that we have a good connection to our chip and that we should be okay to write. So our third one is reading it, taking a sweet time because this does take a minute. But once it gets done, we run the hash again. They all look the same, so we're good to go. Now we're gonna run our write command. It's, it's about the same command, but we change dash R to W, and then we put in the MSI BIOS file, which is that .2A0 file. Now this part can takes considerably longer. This whole process, reading and writing, took about 30, 35 minutes for me. Um, at first it's gonna read the old flash chip contents, then it's gonna erase and write the flash chip contents, and then it will verify what it wrote. And while it might look like it's going quick on my screen, this is sped up 800% and I did cut a few sections out just because it was a lot of video. <laughs> it just does take a minute. Um, so, you know, go grab a beer, go get some food, like, and be back and it should be ready to go. You'll know when it gets back, it'll say verifying dot dot dot, and then it'll say verified. And we're starting that process now, so the writing should be done shortly. Now, once it gets done with the writing, we unplug the clip, we're gonna put our CMOS battery back in, and we're gonna hook up our 24 pin ATX power. I will say I wasn't a big fan of the mining chassis that came with the uh, motherboard. It doesn't have all the standoffs, so there was some flex when plugging in cables, but this should be the last time I have to do that. Um, so once we plug that in, we'll also plug in our 8-pin CPU power. Um, this one was considerably better. There's more standoffs near it, and it, it did not flex nearly as much. But once we have all this hooked up, we should be ready to just turn it on. Now the fan spins up and that's great, we're getting power, but this is what it did before. So um, we're just gonna let it sit for a minute. Generally when you update a BIOS, it does a quick boot and then quick restart afterwards. And you'll actually see the fan will spin down for a second and then it'll spin right back up. And this is that little restart I was talking about. And if we look at my screen, we can actually see I'm getting a post. It detects the CPU, it detects our i5-9400 it detects the 16 gigs of RAM. So I quickly go run and get a keyboard and I press F1, you know, want to make sure everything works. And we get into the UEFI. This is the latest thing we just put on there. Um, I'm going to have to fix the date and time as I said it was 2017, but it's working. This is great. Something someone sold me for cheap because it was dead. Um, is now working and now when it restarts it'll actually have a proper logo um, after that initial setup you'll see the pro series logo at least for this motherboard and then it has this fancy like mining graphics card page showing you what cards are plugged in or working and then just because we don't have OS on there it's gonna go back to the UEFI thanks for watching guys I really appreciate it leave us a like and subscribe down below uh, please comment. We love to hear your feedback. And if honestly you disliked it, dislike the video. Uh, me and Ryan have a podcast on the same channel. We do it probably weekly or so. And just subscribe and check it out. And I'm glad you guys came.